these are the tools required for the spindle performance upgrade. You'll need some 18 thou diameter cleaning wire, one 2 millimeter hex driver, one 1.5 millimeter hex driver, some pipe cleaners, some ESD swabs, spindle PCA removal tool, Molly coat G4500 spindle o ring lube, and a small flathead screwdriver. The parts required for the spindle performance upgrade are one large o ring, one small o ring, two poppet valves, one venturi with o rings, a large o ring and a small o ring, one venturi sleeve, one plate washer, and one valve preloader. Let's start by removing the spindle guide cap. We're going to take a 1.5 millimeter wrench. We're going to loosen this top screw two or three turns. Then I'm going to take the same wrench and place it in the hole right beside the screw. Slide it forward. Take the spindle guide cap, place it to the side. Take the spring out, place it to the side. Take the spindle, push it out through the bottom, place that to the side. I'm going to turn the spindle assembly over and I'm going to remove the two screws on the theta cable bracket. Remove the bracket. Take the theta motor cable and slide it out of the connector. Turn the spindle over. And now I'm going to remove the three screws on the spindle PCA. I'm going to grab my spindle PCA removal tool. I'm going to slide it over the top of the spindle assembly such that I see a little bit of the green PCA over the top of the tool. I'm going to hold the tool facing up. I'm going to lift the PCA and the tool straight up. If by chance any of these pins happen to get bent, you can slide the PCA board out and use the back side of the spindle PCA removal tool to straighten the pins. Slide it over the top of the pins, slide it back out. Next we're going to remove the silencer. Gonna remove that, put it off to the side. Next we're going to remove the three screws um, that connect the upper housing to the lower spindle assembly. These three screws are quite long. Place them to the side. One. Two. And three. Remove the upper housing. Turn the upper housing over. And this is where the flathead screwdriver would come in handy. You're going to remove this upper poppet valve, which is the air kiss valve. And we're going to discard this because we're going to replace this part. Put the upper housing to the side. We're going to clean this later. Now I'm going to remove the valve preloader. Again, we're going to replace this part. So I'm going to throw this part away. Remove the lower poppet valve, which is the vacuum valve. And we throw this part away. Remove the O-ring that's in the lower housing. And throw that away. Now remove the venturi assembly. Turn the spindle over. And we're going to throw both of these parts away because we're replacing them as well. Now take the 2 millimeter wrench and we're going to remove the two screws that mount the spindle to the head. Slide it down through the hole here. Grab a hold of the screw. It's spring loaded so you're going to pull on the screw as you unscrew it. And remove 
the screw. Slide the plate washer over the screw, flat side down, and screw it back into the hole. Mirror all the way in when the screw is spring loaded. And turn the spindle over, put the other screw back in. Now we're going to install the new Venturi. So we grab the Venturi here. We're going to take it and we're going to put it cone side in. We're going to hold it up just like that. We're going to turn our spindle upside down and place it over the top. Grab our Venturi sleeve, slide it over the top. Replace the O-ring in the lower housing. We'll go right here like that. Now we're going to grab our poppet valve, our vacuum valve. Because it's a new valve with new o-rings, we're going to have to use the Molly Coat G4500 spindle o-ring lube. We don't want to put too much on, so we're going to grab an ESD swab. And we're just going to put a little small dot, about two millimeters. I'll give you an idea of that. Then we're going to just wipe that on the ESD swab with a clean finger. We're going to grab the valve and we're going to wipe both the red and the green O-rings all the way around the valve with a nice thin coat. Next we take the valve and we place it in the lower assembly. You want to make sure that you don't push on the actual black circuit board but instead on the sides, the silver sides there. Take a look at the valve and make sure that it is square to the body and press down and seat the valve. Now take your valve preloader, white side up, and place it on top of the vacuum valve. Take the lower spindle assembly and put it on the side. Now let's grab the upper assembly and let's clean the upper housing. You should see a hole in the upper housing. Take the isopropyl alcohol, put on the ESD swab inside the inner housing, clean that up, pipe cleaner works well. There may be a case where the hole is pretty clogged up and you have no choice but to use the 18 dial wire and free the particles up and then use an ESD swab again and clean out the hole. The hole should be in the upper part of that housing. Clean the inner housing until you can see that hole clear. Now take the air kiss valve, remembering to lubricate the O-rings with the Molly Coat G4500. It's already done, so we're going to slide that right in the housing and press it down. Now take the upper housing and assemble it to the lower housing. Take the three long screws them in, take your 1.5 millimeter wrench and tighten them down. It's important that the valve caps are square to the body. Replace the silencer Take the spindle PCA and removal tool and carefully insert the four pins into the four holes in the valves. Slide the tool out. Place the three screws back in the spindle PCA. Slide the theta cable back into the connector so that you can't see any more of the brass. Take the theta cable guard, hold it up like the letter U, put it in place, hold it with your thumb, take one of the screws, place them back into the assembly. And grab the other screw, place that in the lower part of the assembly. Now I want to clean the inner spindle. 
So you're going to take a dry ESD swab. And we're just going to run it through the spindle head. You can also use a pipe cleaner if you'd like. Then take the spindle itself with a lint-free cloth and some isopropyl alcohol and clean the outside of the spindle. Turn the cloth over, dry the spindle. And now what we want to do is we want to clean inside the spindle as well. Dry pipe cleaner. Turn the spindle over and place the spindle in the housing with the Theta Home Sensor keyed in the hole. Take the spring, put it on top. And we'll take the spindle cap. We want to make sure that the screw is facing forward or facing the Theta motor or the label on the spindle. Slide it all the way down past this groove so you can see that groove. And we want to slide this in into that groove. So we slowly let it slide up as we put a little pressure on the spindle. And because we never removed this screw, we can then go right back in, tighten that screw down, remove the o-ring on top of the spindle, throw that away, grab the new o-ring, place it over the top. Grab a hold of the spindle from the screw side of the cap, hold it down, and shake the spindle back and forth so that the spindle is free inside the housing. Post requisites is to take this to the spindle tester make sure that it works correctly, then mount it back on the head and either perform a S-cal, which is a spindle calibration, or perform a full calibration on the head if you replace all 30 spindles.